Main man, made man here. Y'all know how I get down. We talking boxing. All right, ladies and gentlemen, Andre Ward versus the virtually unknown Alexander Brand. 25 and 1, 19 knockouts. Uh, ladies and gentlemen, I guess you can just skip to the chase because it seems like every Andre Ward video I do, I go back to the same freaking points. And, and it ain't going to pretty much change this particular video, so I'm going to try to keep it pretty short. Uh, the thing is this. Is Alexander Brand a cherry pick? The answer is absolutely. He is definitely a cherry pick. But guess what, ladies and gentlemen? I ain't mad at this cherry pick. And I have reasons for such. The thing is this. I mean, anyone, for, before I move in, let me just say, if anyone disagrees that Alexander Brand is not a cherry pick, you're out of your minds. You're out of your minds. The dude, he's never fought. At light heavyweight division before he's never even fought at 175 okay he possesses no sort of threat stylistically to andre ward he's not even ranked in the top five ten of anything there's no threat coming here box rec is even looking past this fight and they've already put up the sergey kovalev fight so uh, Alexander Brand is 39 years old, ladies. It's a cherry pick, okay? It's a cherry pick. The man is not, his most notable fight is a loss to Badu Jack back in 2012. Now, though that was an eight-round fight, that's what people don't like to talk about. That was an eight-round fight that came down to a split decision. Now, I'm not saying Alexander Brand is a bum because he's not a bum. It's just that it, this is a cherry pick. This is not the level of Andre Ward. You know what I mean? It's just not. But... Listening to Virgil Hunter speak, shout out to Dante's Boxing Nation. Go over to that man's page and listen to the interview that he has with Virgil Hunter pertaining this fight. It makes sense. It's like, according to Virgil Hunter, they've made several offers to other fighters. And these fighters pretty much didn't accept the fight. They priced themselves out of the fight. Um, you know, some even fighters, even, you know, by the mention of Vada, according to Virgil Hunter, Eric Scoglin, who's 25 and no 11 knockouts, another guy who's not a threat to Andre Ward. Um, this fight, they were looking at that guy. He was basically the front runner at one point in time. And, and, and that fight, uh, you know, got canceled or he backed out. His team canceled it, according to Virgil Hunter, once VADA, the drug testing agency, was introduced into negotiations. Then Scoglin and his crew backed out according to Virgil Hunter um I don't know they said they offered Nathan Cleverly a fight uh Cleverly backed out he priced himself out so they've looked at other soft touches needless to say uh but none of those guys accepted it now if you look on the other side of the hour Sergey Kovalev he is fighting Isaac Chalimba in 25 and 3 uh 10 knockouts, 25, 24, 3, and 2, 10 knockouts. And Chalimba is a soft touch for Kovalev because HBO, at the end of the day, is protecting both fighters. These are stay busy fights. These are stay busy fights. And it's all right with me as long as we get Ward and Kovalev at the end of the year. The reason I'm really okay with this is because, like I said in previous videos, Andre Ward missed out on a lot of opportunities during his fighting years with his promoter when he was going against dan goosen and all those guys and when he was his former promoters he was missing out on a lot of opportunities a lot of money all right and and he wasn't marketing himself properly now with this particular situation he is fighting ladies and gentlemen three times this year we've already seen him earlier against sullivan barrera we're going to get this fight and we're going to get the Kovalev fight at the end of the year. That's three fights. That puts a lot of money in the pockets of Andre Ward. Missed out money. Sure, they're soft touches, but the guy got to get his paper up, man. He had long legal battles and stuff with his promoter, man. The dude needs to get his paper up. And so I'm cool with that. And especially since we're getting the cherry on top at the end of this year with Sergey Kovalev. That's going to be humongous, ladies and gentlemen. So we got to understand what Andre Ward is doing. For everyone out there, oh, Andre Ward fight nothing but bums, kill it. Just kill it. As long as you know the Kovalev fight is on the horizon, you shouldn't be saying this. Now, whether you watch this fight or not, you know what I mean? Because technically these two was already supposed to have been fought in the past. 
Let's not forget, ladies and gentlemen, that this dude, Alexander Brand, was also the front runner for war to fight on the Canelo and Cotto undercard. We all know Miguel Cotto is also signed to Rock Nation Boxing, the promoter of Andre Ward also. So Ward was going to fight on that card against the same dude. Either way, one way or another, the fight was going to happen, man. So I ain't mad at it. As long as we get Sergey Kovalev at the end of the year, I don't. I don't see anything wrong with it. Kovalev is taking a soft touch right now. Ward is taking a soft touch right now. It happens. Neither one of them are risk losing. And they are going to make sure, and HBO also is going to make sure that this fight happens at the end of the year. This fight is happening in Oakland. When they originally talked about this fight, they thought it was going to go down in Vegas. But it didn't. It's going down in the backyard of Andre Ward in Oakland. And another almost ensuring Andre Ward a victory. You know what I'm saying? So, you know, I, I don't know, man. I, I, I'm i not going to run around and act like this is uh, the greatest fight in the world, but I understand totally what it is. You know what I'm saying? Andre Ward wouldn't fight three times in one year if he didn't have soft touches involved. Trust and believe. You know what I mean? This dude, Alexander Brand, he's coming off beating an under, uh, undefeated fighter. He's on an eight-fight win streak. Um, though they were all super middleweights, the 168-pound division, Andre Ward fights at 175, and this is this guy's first fight at 75, but he's still on an eight-fight winning streak. He's four and eight in his last eight as far as knockouts are concerned. You know what I'm saying? So, you know, I don't know. It's going to be an easy victory for Andre Ward. He's going to cruise right through this dude. He's going to cruise right through him. I don't care less. I put this in the same light as Earl Spence's next fight. Just get it over with. And so we can get to exactly what we've been looking forward to. I just want Earl Spence, Spence to get this final eliminator out of the way so we can get to hopefully kill Brooke. And I just want Andre Ward to get this thing out the way so he can get to Sergey Kovalev. So it is what it is, man. I ain't mad at it, man. Especially understanding. they. It seems as if, according to Virgil Hunter, the opponent that they were looking for, a lot of people may go down the road of saying, hey, this guy does not get Andre Ward prepared for Sergey Kovalev. Because of the power differences and the weight differences, right? Well, according to, Vir according to Virgil Hunter, they just was looking for a rangy opponent. They wanted a guy with range because we all know Sergey Kovalev is a rangy fighter. So it seems as if they're preparing Andre Ward not, I guess they feel that he's already acclimated to the weight in a way. They want to get him more so acclimated to the style of Sergey Kovalev, which is rangy. And that's what they think they have found with this guy Alexander Brand. So look at it that way, man. Like I said, they were supposed to fight before in the Canelo Cotto fight, but the fight didn't go down because of an injury. Andre Ward's knees swelled up allegedly at that time, and so they had to cancel that fight. So yeah, like I said, one way or another, we would have gotten Alexander Brand either way. You know what I'm saying? So I don't know. I'm with I now I can understand if people ask the question of, yo, there's a lot of light heavyweights that would have, you know, given them a fight. You know, including this guy who just beat uh, uh, Fauna Far. You know what I'm saying? He would have probably been a good contestant. I understand all that, ladies and gentlemen. But you got to understand, Andre Ward is not going to risk a loss in, in route to that big bag of money that's going to be involved with Sergey Kovalev. He knows HBO is ready to come up off the millions and, 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 and put up for that particular fight. And he ain't going to jeopardize that, ladies and gentlemen. It's business. It's boxing business. So it is what it is. We got Alexander Brand, Andre Ward. It is what it is. Get it out the way. Move on to Sergey Kovalev. And that's all I got to say about this particular thing, man. Let Andre Ward get his paper up, man. That's all I'm saying. And to the next video, Main Man, Made Man, don't forget to subscribe. Twitter, Made Man 511. Facebook, Main Man, Made Man. Boxing Forum, Google Plus, Main Man, Made Man. Don't make no mistakes, ladies and gentlemen. If this was a other another time where we don't have a Kovalev fight on the horizon this is just a typical Andre Ward fight oh I'll be screaming from the rooftops who the hell is this guy why is this guy on the on the horizon of Andre Ward why he's never even fought that light heavyweight there's many ways to pick apart this fight for the bad you know what I'm saying but let's just keep our eyes forward on the horizon Andre Ward Sergey Kovalev is the destination anything else in between we don't give a fuck to the next video. Peace out.